a leader is someone who asks the Lord Lord what shall I do for you amen tonight I want you to say Lord what shall I do for you say it everybody Lord what shall I do for you amen I'm reading from Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 22 and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters as he journeyed verse 3 he came near to Damascus he was going to Damascus Damascus I believe is in Syria I believe is the capital of Syria and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me and he said who art thou Lord and the Lord said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and he trembling and astonished verse 6 are you with me said Lord what will thou have me to do and the Lord said unto him arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do turn to Acts chapter 22 quickly and here Paul is narrating the same story and he says it a little different way but it's basically the same thing verse 7 and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, O Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Verse 10. And I said, This is Paul. He said, And I said, what shall I do Lord and the Lord said unto me arise and go into Damascus and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do amen, amen. anybody who wants to shine and do well with God Andy your first response to God when he visits you tonight is Lord what shall I do for you? No, Lord. What can you do for me? Lord. When will you build a house for me? Lord. When are you going to give me a beloved? Since your power is so real and I've fallen. The Bible says Saul fell to the ground. He fell. He was slain. Ah, ah. He was slain. On the floor and he got up and he said ah Lord when am I going to see the beloved because I believe that <laughs> I've fallen under the power and the power is working and Lord who is he Lord show, show him to me now Lord no Paul fell under the power he had a voice a light shone, and he fell did you read it when we say he fell and he got up and said Lord what shall I do what shall I do now? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Now what can you do for me? But what can I do for you? The church is full of people saying, what can the church do for me now? Bless me, Lord. Touch me. Move, Lord. I came again tonight for your touch. Lord, if you can touch anything, touch me. As the spirit moves, Lord, I know that tonight is my night. But God is telling you, listen, if you want to shine, look, Paul outshone all the other disciples. We read about Paul. Philippians, Colossians, Ephesians, Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Romans, Galatians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Philemon, Titus, Hebrews, first and second Thessalonians that's Paul he outshone everybody else because when he got out of the floor after his encounter with God Lord what shall I do for you 
Read it for yourself. Said, Lord, what are you going to do for me now, Lord? I know tonight, Lord, is my time of receiving your blessing. Yes, Lord, I go to receive. <laughs> Don't let me go empty-handed tonight, Lord. <laughs> Don't let me go empty handed. Aha. That song encapsulates the mindset of the modern charismatic Christian. That song. Don't let me go empty handed. Don't let me go. Don't let me go. <laughs> Look at the charismatic. Where is the mic? Look at him singing. Tiku, get on the keyboard. Sing that song. And you should see the instrumentalist so happy. Don't let Give him some volume. Don't let me go. Ah. So don't let me go empty. Mabo, don't let me go. Mabo, don't let me go. Mabo, eradie. Mabo, so don't let me go empty. Uh, give him some volume. Give him some volume. Oh. 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 So don't let me go empty. It's not possible. It's not possible. Look at that. That is the mind. Of the charismatic today. Mabau, I have arrived. I have come. I have come to the church. I will not go empty. I'm taking something with me. But as for Paul, when he got up, what shall I do? What, what am I supposed to do? Tell me the things I am supposed to do. Show me, Lord. What shall I do for you? You see? The what shall I do? And the what am I going to get? They are like people who live in heaven and hell. Oh, yeah. The one who comes and says, what shall I get and I have arrived? I'm not going without a blessing. He is always seeking for that blessing. But the one who says, what shall I do? God is always sending him. Say, okay, yes, do this. Here is ten thousands of things to assist you to go. He doesn't ask for things. So, what shall I do? You, I want you to go here. Okay, go. What shall I do? What shall I do? Do you think God will tell you what to do if you don't ask him? Look, me, I'm a pastor for some years. There are, there are times I've given people advice. They were very angry with me. Yeah. There are times I've given people advice. They were not happy with me. From that time, their friendship with me changed. So I have learned not to freely give advice. Yeah. I don't advise everybody. And also, my, I advise up to a point. Amen. Even in my own, even my own church members. It depends on how much you can take. It will be up to a point. 
God is looking at you, Catherine. And when you say, What shall I do? Hey, go to the city. Now. <laughs> when God says go to the city, it tells you that there is more instruction to come. If you think God spoke to you once and therefore he's finished speaking to you, please let me inform you tonight. Arise, go to the city. Then Paul would have been in Damascus for the rest of his life. Did you not see him going all over the world? All the whole of the book of Acts is full of Paul's journeys. Not just Damascus. Arise, go to Damascus is the first instruction. A leader, number two, is someone who continues to find out what God is leading him or her to do. So, it's not just once, what shall I do? But number two, you continue. Otherwise, you will never really know. So, somebody say, oh Lord, oh Lord, you did this last time. God does things continuously in your life. Recently, the Lord has been telling me some things and I don't even know what it means. Amen. Arise and go into the city. And there, there will be another direction. So if God spoke to you, ah, I've been in the choir all the time. Perhaps God will want you to be in the ashes. Yeah? Or perhaps you've been, you've been, you've been preaching and, I mean, I've been preaching for a long time. And then God started to lead me to healing. Yeah. Louisa, were you here? Yeah. You've, you've, all, you've all been here with me. So, if God is leading me on into miracles and healings, what should I, should I say? He's lead, led me into A, B, and C before, so I'm going to continue. I still continue. It doesn't mean you, when God leads you to do a new thing, you don't do the old thing anymore. But you realize that God is a very progressive God. You will be moving on with him all the time. Many of us have stopped moving with God, have stopped moving on with God, because we stopped hearing what God has said. We heard the first time, and since then, our minds and our hearts are closed to God. Go to Damascus. And he didn't say, go and stay in Damascus. He said, go to Damascus. And there, I will continue to speak to you. Friend, God wants to prosper you more than you want to prosper. Look, God has shown me. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. For prosperity, more than you can carry, more than you imagine, more than you want. God wants more than you want to prosper you and to bless you. Number three, a leader is someone who finds out what must be done and does it. Now, you got to be an action man if you're going to be a leader. If there's corruption, you weed it out. You get it? When your leadership abilities are waning, that is when you can no longer deal with some of these things. I remember one country they had a revolution and initially at the beginning of that revolution there have been many revolutions in the world French Revolution Cuba all over Russian <laughs> and initially at the beginning of that revolution they were very strong on house cleaning and corruption but as the years went by and as the leaders abilities 
to deal with those things wind corruption became obvious i'm telling you a story of some country somewhere you could see corruption all over but the same hand which came out murdering and killing was now weak to even even suspend or sack you see when you have a strong ability to lead you deal with but when it's weak you can't deal you see so when your leadership abilities are strong you can make the move and some of you that's why your chapels and your churches and ministries are not working because you don't take decisions you don't make a move paul said what shall i do go to damascus look paul he he preached so much that the people in damascus were so angry with him they wanted to kill him they had to get paul out by a basket <laughs> And he came to Jerusalem. And when he got to Jerusalem, nobody wanted to be with him. It was Barnabas who took him to the apostles. He was, I mean, when he found out what he should do, he did it. Some of you, you, you can find out 10,000 times. As the word is coming and telling you 100 times, do this, do this. You won't do. But from tonight, you will begin to do in Jesus' name. Amen. The last point for tonight. A leader is someone who follows the inner witness. Until he becomes a son of God. This is the last point for tonight. Amen. Are you blessed tonight? Good. He follows the inner witness until he becomes a son of God. Now, we are going to read two, three scriptures and then we are going to go on and we're closing very soon. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and verse 16. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Amen. Let's all read verse 16 together. The Spirit does what? Bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Turn to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And we are going to read verse 16. 8, 9, and 10. There are three that bear witness in there, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his son. Verse 10. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself hath the what the witness where in himself he has the witness in himself underline these verses because you're going to need them turn with me to colossians chapter 3 let me read all the scriptures that i have to read so that after that we just talk this is the last point for tonight colossians chapter 3 verse 15 and let the peace of God, brabio, is that word. Which word is it? Let the peace of God rule or govern or guide in your where? Are you with me? In your hearts. To the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful amen did you get that let's all read it together amen galatians chapter 4 
And we are going to read verse 6. Now we have come to the most important part of all that I've been saying, especially from yesterday and today, because now I'm coming to the practicals of how to follow God. Amen. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your where? Your hearts crying what? Abba father amen all right did you get all those scriptures are you sure very good now we finished reading the scriptures so i'll make reference to them as we go along but underline them in your bible if you're listening to the tape mark them note them down these verses all speak about god in you talking speaking because god is a spirit he is not a mind god is not a human being god is not a dog god is not an animal god is a spirit dogs have a way of communicating my dogs communicate with the next doors people's dogs every morning i don't know what they talk about but at a particular time they start discussing something across the road and they have a long conversation at a certain point in time there is a certain bed that starts singing at 5 20 a.m in my house every morning at 5 20 it starts i don't know what it is saying but if i was a bed i would probably understand what he's saying But since I'm not a bird, I don't understand what it means. But I know that they start talking about something early in the morning. The dogs are also talking. So depending on what sort of being you are, you communicate at your level. Now God is not a bird. He's not a dog. He's not a human being. He is a spirit. So he communicates spirit to spirit. Now you are also a spirit. The Bible says we are spirit, soul, and body. But your spirit is inside the body. And it has a mind. That's where the difficulty is. How to hear and know what the spirit is saying to your spirit. Now, if you can know what God the spirit, God the father, is saying to your spirit... In other words, if you can be tuned to Radio VOG, you will save yourself a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Some elderly ministers in America were discussing something, including Kenneth Hagin. And Papa Hagin said he was listening to them. And the, there was a particular pastor there. And he was a very, very, very successful minister. And they asked him, Apart from the word and the gift of God and so on that is upon your life, what factor would you attribute to your success in ministry? What particular factor? Papa Hagen said he was sitting there just chatting and the man of God said, the one factor that I can attribute to the success that I have in my ministry is the following the voice and the leading of the Holy Spirit all the time in my life and ministry. Another businessman was also discussing. He said he has never made an investment which went bad. But today, many of us make investments which don't work. You can buy pens, and before you finish selling the pens, the city has changed so much in value but by the time you get all your money from your pens back, you have less money, including the profit, you have less money than you had when you bought the pens. How many know that that is what is happening in Ghana today? That is why people have dollarized almost everything. I don't know why we are not using the dollar as our currency. But I'm suggesting to them that they should ask permission to use the dollar because virtually that's what's what happening. Because you see somebody, he's earning... Uh, one million CDs 
today. But and so you say, hey, Charlie, he's earning a lot of money. But the one million CDs he's earning is how many dollars? Two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars. You see, but five years ago, two hundred and fifty dollars was three hundred thousand or something. You see, so now it looks as if he has, his income has really increased, but in reality, it hasn't even maybe it has even decreased. God should help us indeed. Anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, God, if we can tune in to that thing now, you will not make any mistake in your life. From tonight, God is delivering you from making foolish mistakes. This is the key you need. However, most Christians are looking for something that God does not operate by usually. Let me tell you. Most people, number one, will like somebody else to tell them what to do. Pastor, you are a prophet. Have you seen something? Have you seen something? What is the Lord saying? Should I do the business or not? Reverend Saki. Should, ah, should I marry her or not? Dr. Etepo. Should I marry him? Or not? Is it, is it the will of God? Oh, uh, uh, you are a prophet. You see. Tell me. Reverend, tell me. Is it his will? Okay. Me, Pastor, I asked for me, I don't like prophets. Okay. I like dreams. Many people like dreams. And they say, yeah, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will see, you will have dreams. Let me tell you something. Dreams are things by which God can speak to you. But that is not the primary way by which God speaks to you. Dreams are one of the most unreliable methods. How many have dreamt dreams that you wondered about this dream? Bah, you were really wanting that. This dream, bah, dear. In fact, how many woke up and you were happy that it was a dream? You were very glad that the dream was a dream. Because the devil also gives dreams. And also apart from the devil, your mind gives dreams. And apart from your mind, circumstances give dreams. It is a very unreliable and dangerous way to depend on, let your whole life depend on dreams. People who follow dreams often get into big trouble. Oh, yes. People whose lives are, I've had a dream, so this. I've had a dream, so I'm traveling. I've had a dream, so I've decided to leave the church. I've had a, then you can have a dream to leave the church. You can have another dream to stay in the church. You are the most unstable person and most dangerous person to be with. If you go and marry somebody because the person has had a dream about you, what about if the person has a dream about you to leave you? Lord, I've had a vision. No, oh, vision is better than dream. When you read the Bible, you will find out that dreams, visions, and so on are ways by which God can lead and does lead, but are also often very, very dangerous things to be led by. That is why most people don't have that. Look, I know Christians who they just follow dreams. I've had a dream that is, I've had a dream that is, I've had a dream that is. It's a very dangerous way of living. That is why the Bible says that prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Tonight I want to show you the way by which God will show you and speak to you on the most important issues of your life. It concerns your salvation, your marriage, your home, your ministry, how he does it in the word. And as for me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a prophet. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Quickly, 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 please. I wasn't going to read it, but I just sense I should read it. 
If there arise, verse 1, among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, hmm. and the sign and or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and shall obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Because he has spoken to you to turn you away from the Lord your God. Now notice verse 2. He said, if there arise, verse 1, if there arise a prophet or a dreamer and gives you a sign and a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass. And then he comes to you and says, let's go this way. And it's not the way of God. Don't follow him. That person rather should be put to death. Ladies and gentlemen, a person may even have accurate dreams, but it does not mean that what he is telling you is the right thing. And you can see right here that you can have people who will have real dreams which will actually come to pass. I never base my life on a dream. There is no major decision that I've taken in my life based on a dream. Never. Never. Major decision in my life because of a dream. Oh. A dream can guide me. A dream can influence me. A dream can warn me. But not to take me, me, the major important things of my life. I don't use dreams. It's a very risky way to, to live. <laughs> I am just pointing out to you there are great dangers in such things. They, are, they work. They are true, but many of them are also not true. So we've got to find out the principle when, when the Holy Spirit is speaking. What is it like? Is it dreams? Is it the common way? You see, because if, for instance, the way I speak to you is commonly by email. I mean, I hardly email anybody. I, I, I don't, I don't, I've never sent an email since I was born. Since I was born into this world, I've never sent an email to anybody. That's not the way I speak to people. Amen. I don't send emails because I don't even know how to do it, how to send an email. I know it, uh, they are sent, but I don't know, I don't do it. That's not the primary way that I speak to you. Many times I will speak to people on phone or I'll speak to you directly. If I really have something important to tell you, I wouldn't tell you from the uh, pulpit. If I have a serious thing to tell, I'll just tell you. And if you think that I'm preaching about you, you, are, you that, that is not how I work. If I have something to say, I'll just tell you. Unless I don't want to say it. So never be worried. That, eh, today he came and was talking about me. I know that he's talking about me. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about you. Some people depend on angels. This is what they are waiting for, angels. Or, or visions. I mean, you take visions. Papa Hagen, in his book on how to be led by the Spirit of God, he tells you, he said, when Jesus appeared to him, Jesus appeared to him eight times up to 1950, and at the end of it, Jesus told him, I will not appear to you again. From now, I'm going to talk to you the way I talk to everybody else. So you cannot depend on these visions to lead you from now. So, you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are waiting for Jesus, I have been praying that Jesus will appear to me. Up till now, he has not appeared. What am I going to do? Major, what should I do? I should keep on preaching. Amen. Paul has had a light shine around him. Up till today, there's no light. A voice. No voice. Angels. People are having angels appear to them. I have experienced certain things before. That is not what I use to guide me. Amen. Amen. So, tonight we want to ask ourselves, when God speaks to us, what 
is it like? That is the thing you must look for. Now, don't misunderstand. I am not saying that don't believe in dreams, visions, angels, visions, all those things. They are all valid. But you see, it is like a special way by which God would move. If you like, read the Bible and see how many times did Peter have an angel appear to him? Probably once. How many times did Paul have an angel appear to him? Probably once. That was it in his entire life and ministry. So that angel is not going to come because you are going to need direction every day. Amen. Amen. The inward witness is what God uses to guide you on a daily basis. Amen. And what do I mean by an inward witness? The word witness, it, it can be a verb or a noun. A witness is somebody who has seen something. And when he says, I am witnessing to you, it means that I am speaking to you about Jesus Christ. Is that not so? So when they say uh, the Spirit witnesses in us, you know, that it means that the Spirit is speaking in us. Are you listening to me? So if you look at Romans chapter 8, you will notice that it says that in verse 16 that the Spirit bears witness or is witnessing to our spirit. To who? To which part of you is he witnessing to? That what? That we are the children of God. Big Daddy, are you getting me? So the spirit, when he's witnessing to you, Ruby, are you listening to me? When he's witnessing to you, he's witnessing with your spirit or to your spirit. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 6, he said that the spirit of God in our hearts is crying. In other words, he's shouting, Abba, Father, which means you are my father. As the spirit is speaking, you see, this is the most important thing of your whole life, your salvation. There's nothing more important in your life. There's no other important thing in your life other than your salvation. If you don't know, I'm telling you, it's the first thing. And the most important thing in your life, he has spoken to you through that inner witness, speaking to your spirit. And whatever that thing creates, I'm going to give you some characteristics, how to identify that thing when the spirit is witnessing or bearing witness with your spirit how to to feel it <laughs> how to how to know it do you understand how many want to know that how many want to know that this he is speaking i i i, I can hear it i can feel it i know that he is speaking I'm going to show you how because that is the way when he came to salvation that is how he assured you of your salvation that you are a Christian through this way. Uh, if it's your salvation the most important thing he spoke to you that way ha! Huh, then I think that the very important things in your life he is going to speak to you that way and I have found that for me the important things in my life God has not spoken to me by vision, by angel, by what, by what, but by this method where he, the Bible says, the spirit cries. So the spirit is crying. Have you heard it with your ears before? He's crying, he's shouting. Hey, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Have you heard it with your ears? No, but he's in there. The Bible says, he's crying. He's crying. He's crying. He's shouting. As you are sitting there, he's crying. Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. He has sent his spirit into our heart, crying. Abba, Father, Abba, Father. In other words, the spirit is speaking now but we can't hear but what does it create how do you know that thing he will speak to you about that about your ministry he will speak to you about your marriage he will speak to you about, about decisions that you have to take you go along following dreams some of the sometimes eh, one day i was looking at one brother and he was, everything was a dream as i look at this brother i said this brother is not stable because today he had a dream about this. Uh, every time I saw him, there was a dream. About something. I didn't know what. I was waiting for him to come and tell me that I've had a dream that I should leave the church. I've had a dream that God has told me to leave the church. A leader is someone who follows the inner witness. Number one, I'm going to give you characteristics of that inner voice. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 15, I want to go through each of the verses quickly. It says, let the peace 
of God rule. In other words, let peace in your heart guide you. I'm reading from the Bible. Do you understand? It didn't say let dreams guide you. It didn't say let prophets guide you. It didn't say let pastors guide you. It says let the peace of God in your heart rule. And the word rule is the word brabio, which means to be an umpire or a referee. In other words, the referee is the one who says stop. He's the one who says, okay, play. He's the one who says, play on. He's the one who says, carry on with what you are doing. He's the one who says, stop. He's the one who says, carry on with that business. He's the one who says, stop. He's the one who says, carry on in your ministry. He's the one who says, stop. Let or allow the peace of God rule. Let the peace of God guide you. Investor, it's not very dramatic like angels. I agree. I agree. But we have seen dramatic things come and go. And the word is still here. We are, all, we are still here. Yes. One day, Reverend Saki went to follow, uh, not to follow, but to look at some all night. Some people were doing some all night. And he came back and we, I was asking him, we were asking, what did you see at the all night? Because he just went to see some people performing all kinds of things at that all night. And you will see things. People doing all kinds of things. Gimmicks. Those things have come and they attract a lot of people. Even our own church members. But after a while they are gone. The word is still here. We are still here. We have church members who have left and gone to follow these things and come. Because the prophet will come to you and tell you, your name is this, this is your car number. But after a while, sometimes they find out that some of these people will get your car numbers and all that and keep them. And they send spies to the church before they come. There's a rich uh, church member who drives a Mazda pickup. The number is what? 3580Q GW. So he'll stand and say, Three five three five eight O oh, Q three five G G W three five eight O oh, Q. I see the name. Tay 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 Tay. Is there somebody here? Tay. With such a car. Ah. I think the first name begins with J. Ah. Okay. The spirit says that uh, you are going to die by next week, but bring an offering to the church, and then you will not die. Come and see me in chambers about that. What is that? I am not saying that God does not move by word of knowledge. Look, I have word of knowledge. I have had all these things and I have them. Don't misunderstand me. You know, God told me, come and teach my word and go home. That is what is stable. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. If there's no peace, don't go. I said, if there's no peace, don't go. If there's no peace, don't do. If there's no peace, don't do. Peace in your heart, not in your mind or in your flesh. It says, the sp- God has sent in Galatians 4, says the spirit crying. But you see, because God is a spirit, like I said, the birds are talking to the birds. The spirits are talking to the spirit. So your physical ears don't hear and that's why you've got to now quieten down to hear what the spirit is saying so let me give you nine or seven eight i don't know how many there are how many eight steps to catching radio vog or eight steps to catching the voice of the holy spirit to your spirit or the inner witness number one go into the closet what did jesus say he said when you pray (laughs) when you pray what do you do go into the closet why does he say that is it because god is in the wardrobe 
is God in the wardrobe no it is because it is in a sense to cut off everything else around you when everything around you is hey 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 hey, you can't take a good decision when you are under pressure you can't take a good decision you have to go most of us don't go into the closet so many people when they say god has spoken to them or they are being led by the spirit people who don't go to god and don't cut off other influences often i wonder whether they are really hearing from god or they are hearing from their mind or they're hearing from the spirit or the flesh step number two eight quick points and we share the grace it is not mental logical knowledge that is what you must know that this thing when the spirit speaks to your heart it's not a mental something you must know that so that one helps you to elevate it's not a thought it's not a thought it's not reasoning amen you can write it in that way it's not mental knowledge it's not a thought it's not reasoning <laughs> because rosemary you could reason i have two rosemaries in the line here you could reason about the one at the back you could reason when you calculate and you reason that this is what is good but it may not be it I am telling you the major decisions that I have taken in my life, I didn't take them by reasoning. Amen. It is not a reason. Number three, it is not a physical feeling. <laughs> okay, Oko, come. So it's not a fleshly feeling. You get it? Amen. Now, Oko, can you feel the spirit? <laughs> but let me rub my hand. Can you feel my hand? Feel uh, give him a microphone. Can you feel my can you feel my hand? I can feel it. Feel it? I can feel it. You can feel it? I can feel it. Okay. Can you feel the spirit inside? <laughs> <laughs> you see now? For your physical feeling, you know what you are feeling. So what I'm talking about is not a physical thing that I can feel something here. When I feel that thing, I know that God has spoken to me. Oh. Then you are soon going to start. When I start feeling something on my, my big toe, then it means that God is saying I should turn to the left. I didn't say that. I said it's not a physical thing. It is not a mental thing. But mental it's reasoning physical is physical feelings you got to cut out these voices as you eliminate you soon begin to be left with something <laughs> that thing is the thing we are looking for wow, it's not, I, I want to see an angel me I have seen angels before one day I was sitting on a plane and I saw an angel sitting by me I was flying somewhere. You see, all these supernatural things, I don't want to go. I, I want you to know what the word is. If I want to go into supernatural things and I want to go into visions and things, I also have stories to tell you. Because it's not everything that I have said. But the thing you can rely on is that inner thing. You see, when it came to your salvation, that's what he, how he communicated it to you. And therefore, if salvation told them marriage is going to talk to you that way. How many do you have? Number four. It is a feeling of peace. It's a feeling of peace. You see, again, it's not a physical feeling. Who could come again? It's a feeling of peace. Now, what do I mean by feeling of peace? Do you feel my hand? I feel your hand. You feel my hand? I feel your hand. Do you feel peace? I feel peace too. You feel peace yes, too? I feel peace. Peace about what? <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. 
Are you listening to me? Now, why is it peace? Now, there is peace. Have you heard that expression before? The peace of God that passes understanding. It's beyond your thinking. But you are okay about it. You're okay about it. But the understanding may not be okay about it. But there's peace about it. Now, let me help you define what peace is. Peace is a feeling of relaxation and happiness combined. Relaxation and happiness combined is equal to peace. So when you have relaxation plus happiness, when you feel a, a feeling of rest and relaxation, and then you a sort of a sense of happiness, you know, it's difficult to define about that thing. Wow. Go for it, brother. Glory to God. Glory to God. The next sign. I'm teaching you about it. I'm teaching you about it. It is about important things. This inner witness is about important things. When I was coming to church, I asked the Lord, when have you spoken to me about through the inner witness? And so the Lord showed me all the decisions that are, not all, but some of the decisions that are. There are some other decisions I took not based on this. But when I went through, I realized that they were all the major decisions of my life. It was, none was related to dreams and this, but this particular method, it is about important things because it is about salvation first and by extrapolation, it will be about impo other important things. The next thing is, uh, it is a conviction. And the last one is the next, the most important thing. It's a conviction. It's another way of describing it. It's a conviction. You, you, you are sure about it. Why do I say it's a conviction? Because that is how, what you have when you come about your salvation. Are you saved? How many are sure you are saved in the choir? If you are sure you are saved, stand up in the choir. You sure you're not going to hell? You sinners. Sinners. How many are going to hell? Are you sure you are going to hell? Heaven? Yes. You're going to heaven? Yes. Have you sinned before? If you've sinned before, raise up your right hand. Ha! Huh? And, and you are sure you are going to heaven? You are sure you are saved? Look at these people. They are so sure. And they have a conviction. It's something they don't argue about. They don't even make faith confessions about it. I believe that I am a believer. I believe that I am going to heaven. It is something they are sure about. Look at them. He says, I'm going to heaven. And although some of them are sinners, or many of them are sinners. <laughs> or they were sinners. Is it that also? <laughs> exactly so. <laughs> it's a conviction. Wow. 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 Some of you have convictions. Some of you have convictions that you must be full-time uh, workers for the Lord. You don't obey. That's why you will die before your time. What have I said? Please. I, I, you are cursing me. No, 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 please. Don't, 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 don't say that at all. I'm speaking prophetically. Oh, sit down, sit down. Wow. Because if he's leading and you don't go, you are unguidable. <laughs> you are you are unleadable. I said you are unleadable. You are you are a lizard, not a sheep. Some of you he has convict you have convictions in you strong that you should be pastors and ministers, but you are far from it. Far and you look at it and say, Me, this thing. <laughs> The way I see these lay pastors, how they are tired. Never on my life for me today to do this thing. I won't do. <sighs> oh, yeah. Some of you are supposed to do certain things. You won't do. Reverend Saki told me about a dream he had. One day, he went to preach somewhere, you know. And you see this board here. He had a dream. 
that there were a lot of people on the other side of the river and he was on this side of the river and then all those people needed to cross over to be saved but they, they couldn't cross over and so he laid down and became a bridge and all those people crossed over and walked over him and came to the other side so if you are supposed to be the bridge that people are going to walk on and the bridge is walking somewhere else I said the bridge is work, working at the bank typing letters <laughs> counting money and balancing account the bridge the bridge the bridge upon which people are supposed to walk and come home has traveled defending madras in court because in the eyes of man it sounds nicer it looks more prestigious than to work in the church office so the bridge decided to go to SSB to work <laughs> look I, I, this thing what I'm saying is I am sharing something with you I, it's, it's not me I'm just telling you something honestly honestly I said, this, this thing that I'm preaching I don't like it but I'm telling you because God has told me to say it it's not prestigious to work with. where do you work right house what when I was getting married my father my father got a chair and went to sit outside the gate he, he, we stay we used to stay at Osu he sat in the gate and put another chair and people would be passing by he would just call and say come sit down just and you, ask, you, you look at something my my son he says he's going to marry at a church called lighthouse imagine that <laughs> he said i am a patron of, of 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 the holy trinity church and 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 the girl he's going to marry the the father is a what his name is written on the pews in the Methodist church. You analyze it. Does it make sense? Light. What church is that? Candle what? Light. Lamp. Osono. Huh? He called. The, I remember one accountant. He called. There was an accountant. He was walking by. He called. I forgot his name. He called him. He said, come and sit down. Oh, what do you think about this? He would just sit outside. again, just be talking with people. I said, hey. That is wonderful. You want to marry, they will ask you, where do you work? Lighthouse. <laughs> My daughter will not marry somebody who works at Lighthouse because he's unemployed. Even though he's working there, he's as far as I'm concerned, he's unemployed. My daughter cannot marry a useless person. it be the case that you are supposed to be a bridge over which people walk and you say you have gone on your own journey the Lord be with you good luck wow I said wow it's a conviction hmm. number how many have I given you? Oh. Okay. Seven. It is a knowing. I've not given you that one, isn't it? Okay, it's a knowing. And then the last one, it is repetitive. It is repetitive. It doesn't go away. 
it doesn't go away it never leaves you if God has called you God is talking to you it always comes back it always comes back God is always speaking to you it never goes away it never goes away you can try to escape like Jonah from the presence of the Lord but even in the belly of the will the presence of the Lord will be there you may run far and put yourself and say, I've gone alone here and I've tied myself to that and I cannot escape from this and because of these contracts I've signed I cannot come out but it just doesn't seem to go away <laughs> because the Bible says that he sent his spirit crying 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 isn't it? he did say he cried he's crying the message is continuous crying crying he doesn't go away it doesn't go away listen to me when I was in school Legon I said I was going to be a pastor it never went away never Teku, when I was in Achimota school I knew that I was going to do God's work it has never left me up till today never sometimes when you are a little child it's with you Papa Hagen says he said they would ask his other brothers what are you going to be this one said I'll be a truck driver or this one said I'll be this and they wouldn't ask him because they thought he would be too small he would understand but then he would just open his mouth and say I preacher I preacher I preacher which meant that I will be a preacher as a little child I will be a preacher yeah, yeah. I preach. It doesn't go away. You see, so when he's called you for a long time and you are a bridge and you've also traveled, hmm. when I was in school, I knew that I was a pastor. I knew that I was a pastor. I knew that I, I was a worker for God full time. Finish. I have all, all my life I've been heading towards that point. School could not deter me left or right. I was always on that route. I knew that this was me. Me was this. Me, dad, preach, pastor, God, work, finish, beginning and end. That's why when I proposed to my wife on the 26th of August, 1985, at 21 Mission Street Extension, Osuari, about 20 minutes to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I told her. I asked her two questions. I said, can you be the wife of a pastor? Because you see, I was at the medical school. I was only in third year. So, but I knew. I was not a pastor. I was not even in Kolebu. But I knew. It's a knowing. It's a conviction. It passes understanding. It's not I'm meant because mental, I'm a doctor. Calculation. Second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, postgraduate, did, 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 did. I am something else. But in me, I know I'm a pastor. I have a conviction. I knew. It is there. He's always crying. Pastor. Not only was I knew that I was a pastor, but I knew that I was a teacher. I always wanted to teach. I didn't know why. You can ask my beloved. I told her, I'll sometimes I'll just be talking with her about the future. I don't know what those of you in relationships are doing these days, but in those days we were talking about serious things. <laughs> hmm. We were so spiritual that even in those days, when you get married on your wedding night, if you don't take care, you have all night prayer, meeting, Bible study. <laughs> Communion service and everything will happen. <laughs> But I knew. And I used to tell her, when I was in little school, I used to tell her, you see the way Jesus taught? I used to tell her, I said, Jesus always taught with stories. I told her, Jesus always taught with a lot of stories. So I said, I'm going to preach with stories. That's how I preach. 
illustrations. I said Jesus had stories of Lazarus, of this, the prodigal son. We never forget it. So when they tell us the story once in pre- uh, Sunday school, we will remember that story and we'll take that story home. So I said, me, I will always preach with stories. That's how I've always preached. People think I don't know a lot of, people even think I don't even know how to speak English. But they don't know that that's, you don't know that, you see, the, the higher you go, the more simple you are able to be. When you don't understand what you are doing, well, you can't be simple. The very good doctors, when you ask them, what is systemic lupus erythematosus? The very good doctors, they will explain to you in a way that you can understand. But the doctors who don't understand fully what they're doing, they will start telling you, uh, it's a connective tissue, something. Do you understand connective tissue? They understand connective tissue. They themselves don't understand connective tissue. So they start with that word and then immediately you are lost. But the wild ones, they'll just come down and just tell you, it's a disease where your body becomes harder and all the things in your body become a bit stiff and then you just change and you, your kidneys and other parts begin to be stiff and then you begin to die. Can you understand that? But do you understand connective tissue? Do you understand early cells? Yeah, it's a, it's a condition where you have LE cells. It's a diagnosis. Yeah. It's not the name of Coke. It's the name of something doing a, te- a, a, a test. So I always used to talk. And I know that I, I'm, I'm teaching, teaching. I used to teaching. I said, I'll teach, I'll teach, teach. God always told me, teach. Even as I'm doing, I would also like to have a miracle service and be flowing in the power of God everywhere. Let me take off my shoes. I hope I don't have any holes in my socks. I also, I, I, I would do, but God said, teach, teach, teach. One day I had a vision. I saw a spear. The spear was going like that. God told me that. This spear is the teaching. It must always be in front. Teaching is the most important. It will always clear the way and let you stay on the right track. I've been teaching the word. Teaching, 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 teaching. That's what I've been doing. It's in my heart. I, it does not it pass understanding with my reason, with my mind. It's not a feeling that I have in me that at this place I have a feeling at here. You see, I've got a small pot belly here. That this, this place is going to be, when I feel some warm here, then I know that a, a teaching anointing has. Not, not have that feeling. It's a knowing, it's a, it's a conviction, it is a feeling of peace and joy. When I think of teaching, that I'm going to teach, I feel happy. Yes, sir. That's why I can teach you for eight hours and you, you will not sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah? Those of you who have come for camp meetings before, I can preach you to for 12 hours, you will not sleep, you will be sitting with me. Yeah. I'll talk to you uh, for hours. That's why we have a lot of pastors yeah. and leaders that have been sent out because we have been teaching and teaching. And it's not just making people happy, but we have been teaching them step by step. Yeah. People sit at places and criticize. Why don't you rather come and learn what's happening? Yeah. Wow. Full-time ministry. No, no dream. No dream. No vision. No angel. I knew. I knew. I had no peace to do anything else. I said, to, I, could, I cannot do anything else with my life. I must only be. In fact, at a point, I became afraid. I said, I felt that if I live on outside this thing, I will die. Reasoning, after I've gone to school, and my father is expecting me to follow my course. Reason, it doesn't go with my reason, my mind. Feelings. Do you know what it feels like when you wear a pair of shoes? Everybody looks at it and says that it's an offering shoe. Do you know what it feels like? I didn't feel like being a pastor full time. You know what it feels like when you drive a car? Everybody looks at the car and says that that's an offering car. It's our money that they used to buy the car. I didn't feel like it. Because in my father's house, before I even became a pastor, my father was driving Mercedes Benz. My father brought one of the first smiling Mercedes Benz to Ghana. GZ4314. Yeah. When it came together, it was like a plane. <laughs> So that if I travel, they say that it is a church traveling. No, before I became a pastor, I used to fly first class with my father as a child. I was sitting there, 
first class cabin, myself, the chief justice, and one other person. And the three of us are going. I said, young person. Not, I was not a pastor. I was just my father's child. <laughs> so, in terms of like feeling that, so that everything you do is like the people are looking at you. You think I like, as I'm talking, I know people are lo- looking at me on TV. It, it's something. It's something. I, I, I hardly any place you can go. You go to a restaurant. You, almost everywhere. I don't, I don't like to get out of the car. As soon as I get out, I sit right out. It's him. One day I went out. I was with Pastor Ko and I said, we were just going somewhere with the children. And we were just going somewhere then. To go so they all came that they want to take pictures with me. Said, oh, this is a private meet place that I have come. The people are coming to take pictures to go and show that we were with him at that place. <laughs> feeling, not feeling, knowing, conviction. And I felt peace about it. I said, I've got to do it. How would I survive? I didn't know how I would survive. Because the church didn't have money. It didn't even have enough money to pay. And I never was paid for a long time by Lighthouse. Thinking, see, I'm trying to tell you something. There are things that are contrary to your mind, but God is not a mind. God is not a mind. He is not a mind. He's not logic. He's not reasoning. He is a spirit. He's talking to you. He's convicting you. He's giving you peace about certain things. He's giving you a knowing. You know. You don't understand why you know, but you know this is it. Do. Dear bridge. Dear bridge, please don't travel somewhere. Feeling. I used to go to restaurants with my father and my mother. One of the restaurants we, we went to as, a, as children was Palm Court restaurant, Chinese restaurant. Very beautiful restaurant in those days. Today, it's, I think it's a security area, so it's too near the castle. I don't know why they don't function there. If I become a pastor, you go to a restaurant, they say, that's the offering. I once went, I once met somebody at, at the restaurant. And straight away he said hey you've come to use the offering at the restaurant there eh? he just shouted it out at the reception of the you come to use the offering of the at the, at the restaurant what what is this as a child i went to restaurants not don't mind your wife chop bar restaurant palm court So I'm trying to let you know that you've got to rule out your mind. Rule out your thinking. Rule out your feelings. It's not those things. It's not your feeling. It's not your mind. It's not how you are thinking. It's not logical. But it's annoying. It's a peace. Even though it passes understanding, it's there. And it doesn't go away. <laughs> you can move around, but it doesn't go. It's still there. You don't know that this is what you must do. You can't escape from it. Do it. I said, do it. And live here and obey and be blessed. Writing of books. I just Holy Spirit was saying, write books now. Write books now. <laughs> write books now. Me write books now. Write. There was a time God told me, employ. There are things God has told me to do and I, they, they don't match up with my mind. I said, do it. Do. You just know. There are some things I know that God has told me now, do. I don't like them. I don't understand them. But that is what is to be done. One day God told me, give this pastor money. A great man of God. So give him money. Bless him. I argued with the Lord. But I knew that I had to do it. But I didn't want to do it. Because I didn't want to give the money. But I knew that I should do it. In fact, the Holy Spirit dealt with me until I started crying. And I said, I'll do it. Then when I decided to do it, then the Holy Spirit told, showed me all the blessings that I had received through that man. And he showed me that this man, through him, you are so blessed. And that the reason why he was asking me to give was to complete a certain spiritual transaction which had taken place. That if I had not given that offering, that spiritual transaction would never be complete. 
Because the Bible says that let him that is taught minister back to him that teacheth in all good things. The Bible says I have sown into you spiritual things. I must reap or it is no great thing for me to reap back from you in carnal things. God was trying to complete a certain transaction that had taken place in the realm of the spirit. But I didn't even know that it was something. And he was battling with me. And I was battling with the money. And I said, I want to give this money. The man has a lot of money. I don't need to give him money. And God was saying, it is, do it. Until I broke down. And then I went to do it. <laughs> Hear and obey. And live. And live. And live. It is not a physical feeling. It is not mental knowledge. It is a feeling of peace. You feel okay about this sister you are going to marry. And I don't want even to get into marriage because I'm talking about ministry. You like beloved those and all these things. It's, it's the thing you must be hearing the voice of God is the ministry work. God is telling be in the choir. 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 You won't be in the choir. Okay, go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. But it never goes away. Sing for the Lord. You will sing. Okay, stop singing. <laughs> You're crying. I'm crying. Ah. Hey, you're in pain. Are you in pain? Oh. You forgotten, eh? You won't sing. There's gnashing of teeth, though. <laughs> and weeping, you know, for useless people who don't do things for God. You say you won't do for God. You are watching me. You think I'm, a, I'm an actor. You think I'm Super Odi. I'm not Super Odi. I'm not an actor. What's the name of that man? The, 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 big, the big man. The fat man. Mr. What? Mark Jordan. Or what? I am none of those people. You are supposed to do God's work. Amen? Amen. I am not a pastor. No, you, you are supposed to do God's work. You'll never be free until you do his work. When he convicts you, he says, stay in the church and you are doing something else. Do God's work. You are doing something else. You want to live. You want to live. Read Matthew 25. Unprofitable servant crying. That is why some prayers don't work. Because the pastor is praying against divine laws. How can I pray against divine laws? I break, you break what? You break God. Okay, break him. Break God. Break God. When God says, God, you know something God told me? God told me my singers must sing. It's always in my heart. In fact, actually, I've actually become afraid for my singers in the church. My singing people who are gifted, I've become afraid for them. Because God has shown me that that thing that he's given them, if they don't use it, it will become a problem. <laughs> in fact, it's just such a small thing. If you don't sing in the church, what will happen? What will happen in the church if you don't sing in the church? It's true. One talent. It's nothing, isn't it? Rosemary, bury it. Let's go to bed. Nothing will happen. I can't sleep. You can't sleep, man. You're, you're crying, you see. My heart is broken. You are crying. Oh, really? Let me pray for you. Father, I break. You break what? Break God. Okay, break him. Break God and let's see. You turn the blood of Jesus into stones and throw it at you. You turn the blood of Jesus into stones and you are throwing it at the devil. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> It's a knowing. I said it's a knowing. You know you are saved. You have peace about it. You have peace to do it. Do it. When there's no peace, don't do it. Oh. Should I go? Should I not go? 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 
She didn't go, she did not go. She didn't go, she did not go. We must wait. Wait. Wait on the Lord. We must wait. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Learn our lessons well. In his timing he will tell. Where to go. What to do. And what to say. If you don't wait on God, your flesh will always be leading you. When you see the girl, you feel, Lord, when I see this guy, I feel peace. It's not peace, it's you are feeling. <laughs> 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 because your flesh is big, it's manipulated, it's mobilizing you. This girl that I'm going to marry, she has got papers. She has got a green card. She has, she has won the lottery. When I marry her, I'm in America. <laughs> Lord, when I just think about America, and I think that if I marry this sister, it's going to be peace, and I just feel America has come to me. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. I receive peace and Americanization of my life. <laughs> <laughs> America in Oh, in fact. <laughs> you see, many of us, many of us is flesh song. Flesh song. Flesh song that has led us and directed us. Flesh song. When I was going to get married to my beloved, my wife, I waited for one year. But I wanted to be sure that it wasn't my flesh. I wanted to be sure that it wasn't my mind. So I waited for one year. I told her that, you see, my friends, you see, you see me, I see you. I can turn left or right at any time. So just let's be friends. But let me just tell you that if I am, God has tells me this or this, that's what I'm going to do. Because I knew I have been under pressure before, and I know I can be under pressure to be in the wrong thing. I said, No. Let one year, when one year comes to pass, if it's pressure, it will go by one year. If it is flesh, if it is flesh, at least she will cut her hair a different style during the year. You will see whether you like it, you still like it, or you don't like it. It's a, it's a feeling of knowing and peace. Should you go? Or should you not go? Should you work? I just have been feeling for some time that I should, I should be a, a member of the ashes. But when I look at them, in fact, these young young boys, I don't think I'll join them. Oh, yeah. so straight away. And to whom much? To, if you are faithful that little, God will say, Ah, He obeys me. Let me give Him more and more and more and more. Please open your mind to open your heart and hear and obey. And all the blessings that God has determined for your life, they shall be yours. Stand to your feet. Let's close. Sing it everybody, we must wait, yes Lord, wait, make faith on the Lord, we must wait, we must wait, wait on the Lord, let our lessons well, it is time he will tell us where to go, what to say. And what to do